Hello everyone, it's Tracy. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks very much for joining me. Today I'm doing an assembly tutorial for the 3D Lantern that is available in Andy's store, also known as RLJ Lives. The die set I'm using today has been designed by Nicole Silhouette here on YouTube and I shall link her YouTube channel in the description box below. I do apologise in advance for the length of this video, but I wanted to make sure that things were covered and it was thorough. So let's get started. Here are the dies and the pieces and I shall go through everything. First up we'll talk about the pieces for the lid. You get this piece and you cut that once. You can see the score lines on there. Then there's this piece. We just need one of those. This piece here you will cut four times. Which I'm showing you here. And they are all the pieces that you need for the lid. Moving on to the rest of the lantern, we have this rectangle piece and we'll cut this four times. And you'll see that there are lots of score lines that need to we need to fold and burnish. Then we have this side piece with tabs and also has the window. We'll need to cut this four times. And this is what they look like when they're cut. Next we have this piece which is square, similar to the rectangle, but we only need one of these. And that has score lines on it as well, on all the sides there. Moving on we have this funny three-shaped piece. Now Nicole designs her dies that they will fit in a standard die cutting machine. So it should have another piece there on the side, but then it wouldn't fit. So you'll cut this twice. And then what we'll do is we'll snip the side piece off that we need to attach it to the other piece. And that's a good workaround for this particular piece. Then we have this square, we only need one of those. Then there's a smaller square with tabs we just need one of these. Then we have this funny shape here and this makes the base of the lantern. We need to cut this four times. And the last piece we need is the decorator panel for the window or the windows and we need to cut this four times. job done there. So that's all our pieces cut out. So let's get started putting it all together. So I thought we'd put together the lid first as that's probably the easiest thing to put together. So we just need these four shapes and this funny looking eight shape and this piece as well. So I'm putting the dies to the side. Don't need them anymore. All the pieces are cut out and I'm going to fold along the score lines of that square shape with the slit in the middle. Then I'm going to fold along the score lines on all of these four pieces and you can fast forward me doing this if you like. So I'm just making sure all the score lines are being folded and burnished so we have some nice crisp lines. As I said you can fast forward me doing this if you like. I just wanted to make sure that all the steps were there for anybody that needs them. Next, what we need to do with these pieces, we need to add some curvature to them. So I like to do that in between my hands as I'm showing here. Or you can just swipe the piece down the edge of your desk if you like. That can sometimes help to do that as well. Just needs to be a slight curve. Without adding any extra creases or anything like that. And these pieces can be cut straight from the designer series paper if you like, your decorator paper. And that will make it easier at the end, you don't have to create decorator panels. And then I'm going to attach them to that square piece. I'm going to use glue for most of this project and I'm using art glitter glue and I'm going to put it into one of these little tubes that I got from AliExpress. And if I can find the link, I'll link it in the description box below. So I'm just putting glue along the tab and then making sure I get good coverage across that tab. And I'm going to join this piece to that tab, making sure that it's lined up. 
and press it into place. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other three pieces. Just putting glue on the tab, spreading the glue out and attaching the piece. And you'll see that I'm wiping my fingers off after each time I swipe the glue. I've just got a rag to the side of me, a wet, a wet rag, so I don't get glue all over the place. It just helps with a better coverage of the glue right out to the edges. Because you don't want your lantern to come apart. Now you could just put the sides together here and then put that top piece on, which I have done before with another similar project, but I actually found it a little bit easier doing it this way. So it's up to you, you could do it either way you like. So just getting that last one into place. And then we'll join the sides together. Just making sure the glue is getting a good stick. And you'll see that when we go to put these side pieces together, they fit together beautifully. So I'm just moving one of the pieces out of the way and I'm going to put glue on the tabs. Now I was a little bit keen here and put glue on all of them, which in hindsight I don't recommend doing that because <laughs> otherwise it's gets, the glue dries too quickly. So I'm just bringing it down to the bottom one and making sure we're getting contact down the bottom first and then I'll work my way up using my hand on the inside as well as my right hand on the outside to put the tabs into place. So on the next side pieces I'll show you that I'll be doing them just three tabs first. I'm just moving the piece around so I can get to the tabs and I'm just putting glue on three this time which is a little bit better. I was a little bit gung-ho before. So I'm just putting that piece down to that third glued tab, holding it in place till it grabs hold, and then going back to make sure that the other two tabs are in place. Left hand in on the inside and the right hand out, holding the tabs in place. Then I'll go in from behind to put glue on the remaining three tabs. spread the glue out a little bit and then bring down that side piece and put it into place. These pieces do fit together beautifully which is a credit to Nicole and the way she designs these die sets. So we're making sure that this side piece gets a good hold and we'll move around to the next side. Doesn't matter what order you do them in. So I'm just tucking those tabs in and under and I'm going to fold them down and put glue on from the inside. Three tabs first. Spread the glue out a bit more evenly. Down to the third tab and hold it in place till the glue takes hold. And then you can work your way back up to those other smaller tabs. But it does fit together well. So I'm just holding that in place until the glue dries and then I'm going to put glue on the remaining three tabs there. And bring that piece down into place. And the more you do the sides as you're going around, the nicer it all fits together. Just pressing that into place making sure the other side's sticking and then we'll move around to this last side. Let's fold the tabs down, put glue on the first three, spread the glue out a little bit and same as before, take hold there at the third piece, make sure the glue sets up hold it into place And then you can put glue on the remaining three tabs and that closes up the last side of your lid. And this lid is very similar to the lid that's on the keepsake box, which is also available from Andy's store. So I'm just joining that last side up. 
wiping away any excess glue because you don't want it leaving a mark on your project. Just making sure that the shape is right and it's looking good. Just running my fingernail along those pointy bits there just to flatten them a bit and now we're going to get these tabs and we're going to put glue along the inside of them and we're going to fold them in and that will give the edge of your lid some sturdiness and some strength so putting glue along there and folding it in and pressing it into place and we're going to do that all four sides giving the bottom edge of our lid some strength. So our lid is nearly finished. We're just finishing off these last two side pieces, getting those tabs glued and folded. And then we can work on the piece that goes through the slit at the top, which you can use to hang your lantern if you want to. The lid's probably the easiest and quickest part of this project to put together. It is a lengthy tutorial and again I apologise for that. So we take this piece here that looks like a figure eight and we're going to fold it in half and then fold down those two tabs there. Just fold them back. Going to burnish them so we've got a nice crisp fold. Then I'm going to open it up and put glue on the round piece just the round area and glue them together and then I'm going to put this piece inside through that slit center it up and I fold the tab in hold it with my hand on the outside put some glue on the underside of the tab and stick it to the underside inside top of the lid and do the same to the other side tab glue on the underside then push it down and attach it to the top of the lid just pressing it into place from the outside and what you can do is get this piece and cut it another time and cut off those tabs and you can put that inside to cover your tabs if you wanted to and that's our lid so we'll set that aside to dry and work on the rest of the lantern. The next up we're going to need this rectangle piece and we've got four of them and as you can see they've got score lines and we're going to need to fold along all the score lines of all those pieces which I've gone ahead and done. That does take a while so I did it off camera and we've got one side that has three score lines and another side that has four score lines. And the side that has the four score lines we're going to put glue on and we're going to fold that around and attach it to the underside of that frame and we'll get a square shape which I'm going to show you briefly here before it's glued you'll see we've got a square shape and that's on both of the short ends on the long end however when we put glue on and we fold it around to attach it to the underside we're actually ending up with a triangle shape which I'm going to show you here See, it's a triangle, not a square. And that's going to nest into the square shape of the other side, which is difficult to show when it's not glued down. So we've got one square edge and we've got one triangle edge and the triangle edge is angled in, which I'm trying to show you there, but my camera won't focus. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll start gluing this so you can get a better look. I'm just unfolding it there and I'm going to put glue along the short end and we're going to do the short ends first just along that edge tab spread the glue out and then we're going to fold it around that, that piece is going to be glued to that underside there the inside edge of the frame and this is to get our square shape and you can push it down and burnish it 
and then unfold it and push it down the other way and burnish it again to get a good stick. And that's our square that I was talking about before. And that's on our two shorter sides of the rectangle. So I'm just going to go over to the opposite end and do the other short side, putting glue along the tab and folding it around and pushing it against the inside edge of the frame. Finish it, open it up, push it flat the other way and you'll know which way is the wrong way. And so now on both ends we've got two square shapes. Now we're going to work on the long sides which have three score lines. Put glue along that edge, spread it along. This is a little bit trickier but hang in there you'll be able to do it. And we're going to put that glued edge against the inside edge of that frame. You can use double sided tape here if you like. I just prefer to use glue. But you have to work quickly because the glue, the glue does actually start to dry, which is what I came across here. You can see I'm trying to put it into place against the ed inside edge. And I'm battling against the glue drying. So I'm just pushing it down with my fingernails trying to get that contact with the glue and I think I did have to go in here and put some more glue along that edge. Yeah it's opened up so I'll just put some more glue in there. And hold it into place. So I end up pushing it down onto my work surface. And you can see that that's an angled edge, a triangle and it fits into that square, it nestles in quite nicely. So you've got one edge that has a square shape and one has an angled triangle, which a beveled edge or mitered edge, however you like to call it. So just giving you a good view there of how it's going to look. And it's just the long sides are the ones that are angled in. The two end pieces are the square shape. So I'll just get that last side done. Just put glue along that end tab. Spread the glue along. And again, if it's easier for you to use double sided tape, then go for it. So I'm just folding that around so that that tab is getting in contact against the inside edge of that frame. And I'm gonna hold it in place against my work surface so that I can be sure it's gonna get good hold. Then I pick it up and run my fingernails along where the glue would be on the other side, hoping for some good contact there. Just making sure it's getting good contact. And that's the right side of the frame, which is the outside edge, the part you'll see. And then you turn it over and that's the inside edge. And we don't glue these corners because as the lantern gets put together it all pulls it into shape. So you can see the long sides are the angled in edges and the short sides are not. So you'll go ahead and you'll do that another three times for the remaining three pieces which I went ahead and did off camera as I'm not going to punish you with that. And you can see all my pieces here. Long sides are angled short sides are square. I know I'm saying that a lot and you don't glue those corners so leave those corners unglued. Now we're going to need these four pieces with the tabs and score lines with the windows. We're going to fold along the score lines and for this particular part of the assembly I'm going to switch to 1 8 inch double sided tape. Glue was way too messy for me and I got into all sorts of strife so I'm switching to one quarter sorry one eighth of an inch tape and putting it on all of those tabs I'm just going to take the release paper off one end and I'm going to line it up on that inside edge of one of those frames the outside of the frame that you see is what's facing out which is now facing the camera and we turn it around and we take the release paper off 
that side and we're lining it up against the edges of those frame pieces that we put together earlier making sure it's got good stick checking it to make sure that it's nice and flush on the side that can be seen and doing the same for the long sides just lining up those tabs and it fits in exactly as you can see it's a nice flush finish on the other side just putting the last one on that first piece and I'm just showing you here what I'm lining up against lining that tab up against the inside edge of that frame exactly because it exactly fits against there so there should be no overhang on the top or the good side the side that faces out so that's that side piece of the lantern done and you'll go ahead and do that another three times have your four sides for your lantern now you'll notice on the back of each of the pieces i've gone ahead and put some 1 8 inch tape where i would put acetate so you can have acetate or vellum for your windows and you'll use pieces that are three and a half inch by four and three quarter inch and you'll need four of those but we're not going to stick the acetate in yet but i went ahead and put the tape in anyway because it's easier to do it now than later so we're going to join these pieces of the lantern together to get a four-sided shape and we're going to put glue along the angled edge of that piece so you can see i'm putting glue along there again you could use double-sided tape if you'd like but i'm using glue it's just a bit more economical and those angled edges just fit together nicely and the other reason why you don't put your acetate in yet is, is that you may need access to help with gluing these pieces together and you'll see that I do actually put my fingers through so I'm just making sure I'm getting a good hold there and I'll put glue along the next edge and join the next piece it is very easy to put this together Just joining those angled pieces together they fit together snugly so, and that's why you don't put your acetate in yet because I've got my middle finger through there making sure that that seam's getting a good hold and if the windows were in I wouldn't be able to do that just making sure that that's getting a good stick before moving on to the next piece and the art glitter glue does dry fairly quickly as you can see i'm already up to my last piece to put into place just putting glue along that angled edge spreading the glue, glue out adding a little bit more and putting the final piece into place The most time consuming part of this lantern is actually the folding and the burnishing of all those frame pieces and putting those frame pieces together that create the sides of this lantern. The rest of it goes together fairly quickly. So I'm just putting some glue along that final edge there to close up the lantern. And this is where you can see why it's beneficial to put that quarter inch or sorry, one eighth inch tape on the inside there for your windows because it's easier access when the lantern is not put together so I'm just putting that last edge together and the acetate that I'll be using is three and a half inches by four and three quarters of an inch and I've got four pieces of that ready to go inside you have easy access on either end to get in to remove the backings of the double-sided tape so I was just showing you the measurements again there that was three and a half inches by four and three quarter of either acetate or vellum whatever you'd like to use I'm using acetate I may make another lantern at some stage using vellum that would be a nice soft look so I'm just removing the backings here of that double-sided tape before putting in my piece of acetate I don't know where I'd be without this pokey tool it definitely helps with removing the backings of double-sided tape 
just getting that last backing off and then I'll put my piece of acetate inside and have good access on either end to be able to just line it up on the inside and then press it down into place. And I went ahead and put all four pieces of acetate in and now we have our lantern taking shape and it has windows now. So moving on to the next stage and we're going to be putting the top of the lantern this on. This is where this three sided piece comes into play that we cut out twice. And as I said before, Nicole has designed this die set so that it'll fit in a standard die cutting machine, either your big shot or your cutter bug or whatever. And we're just going to trim the piece off that we need, off the second piece. So we're going to cut it on the angle. And it's just that angled edge piece, not the straight edge piece. And we end up with that piece like that. So I'm just folding the edge that has the widest edge there and that will be glued onto that other side making it a four sided shape. And this is a good workaround so that Nicole could keep the price of the die down and in the grand scheme of the finished project doing this with this piece and taking this extra time it doesn't detract from the final lantern at all it doesn't interfere with the way it functions or looks and it's just worthwhile spending the time doing this when it's not a five minute project anyway so that's my opinion anyhow so there we have our four-sided piece ready to go and i'm going to fold along the score lines and get this piece ready to put together. So I've got all my score lines folded now and it's time to glue this together. Again we've got an angled edge here and a straight edge and the straight edge slots into that angled edge once it's all glued. So we'll start with the straight edges first. Just unfold them there a little bit. Put glue on that tab and we're going to spread the glue out there and then we're going to fold it around and put that edge against the inside edge of the frame. Just going to push it down, unfold it, push it down and burnish it and you can see we've got that square edge. I go to the other opposite side leaving the angled edges for now, putting glue along the tab, spreading the glue, folding it around and pressing it against the inside edge of the frame there, giving it a burnish unfold, fold it the other way, burnish again and we've got two end pieces there. Now we've got to the angled edge and you can see when that's folded around and glued we've got our mitered edge and what I like to do here once I've put glue along the tab there is put a couple of dots on the square edge there and that will hold our mitered edge into place. And what that stops is your corners having any open gaps. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So I'm just holding that in place for the glue to get a good hold. And I'm also making sure that the corners are nicely in place as well. Because you don't want holes in the corners which is why I put the glue onto those edge pieces. So I'm just putting glue along the tab and a little bit on those edges of the square pieces, spread the glue and then fold that piece around and glue that tab to the inside edge of the frame. It is a little bit tighter when you're putting this last edge together. You can see that I'm gluing against that edge just holding it into place, getting the glue to take hold and making sure those corners are nicely positioned as well so we don't have holes in our corners. Now I'm just making sure it's actually square. Now the piece that's got your seams here, that's the piece that's going to be glued down. So I'm going to turn it over and glue it down on top like that on the top of the lantern. So I'm just putting some glue on the top edge of the lantern all four edges, spread the glue out and we're going to 
flip it over so that the wrong side is against the glue and the nice side is facing up. So I've turned my lantern over here so that I can make sure that it's central and good position, which is difficult to show you on from the top looking down. And I don't want to pick it up in case it comes apart. So I'm just pressing that into place, making sure that's got a good stick and it's looking good. Next, we need this square frame. And again, we're going to go ahead and fold along all the score lines. And this piece gets put together in exactly the same way as the previous piece. Just working on the straight edges first. Putting glue along that tab. Spread the glue and then fold it around against the inside edge of that frame. Give it a burnish. So we've got our square and then over to the opposite side, do the same thing. I did have a tear there, but because it's not going to be seen, it's going to be glued down. That was a little bit rough when I was folding and burnishing. And there we go, That those two ends are done and now it's time to do the mitered edge. Same as before, you put the glue along the tab, once it's folded around, it fits nicely into those square corners. So glue along there and also on the tops of those square sides. Fold it around. And sometimes it feels like you might need three hands, but you'll get there. So just putting that into place, making sure the corners are fitting together nicely and that glue is taking hold. So I'm just going to hold that there for a few moments. checking to make sure it looks good from the front and then we can work on the final end there and close that piece up and making these frames has been the most time consuming thing of this project but very very worth it it's a very stunning project when it's finished and it could be decorated in so many different ways and for so many different times of the year. I'm thinking of doing a Christmas one. So just making sure those corners are looking good. Lining up against that edge there. See there's no holes in the corners and that's exactly what you want. So the wrong side is the side with the seams, so I'm going to put glue along this piece and it's going to be positioned on top of the piece that we just placed on top of the lantern. Just making sure I'm getting all the glue on. Bring in the lantern and I'm going to position this centrally on the top. I've got a bit of glue that's seeped out there, but that's okay, I'll wipe that away. It dries clear anyway. And this is making the recess for the lid to fit into. So just making sure that I'm happy with how this is looking before moving on. Put that aside to dry and we're going to work on the base or the feet of the lantern and this is where we're going to use these funny shapes here and we're going to fold along all the score lines and get those pieces ready to assemble. So we're going to put some glue on this end tab and join the pieces together leaving that bottom tab there alone for the time being. Now 
and then we're going to close it up and start gluing our other tabs. Just put glue on that tab and it folds in there like that to make that triangle piece there and that gives the base a little bit of stability. So you can see that, that triangle piece becomes a good sturdy addition to that base piece. And this could be cut directly from your designer series paper as well. You'll see that the light grey paper I've used to contrast, that could be designer paper and cut directly from it. And the darker grey would be your base colour. So that's our feet there, just making sure that's all stuck well. And then we take this larger square and you'll see that that gets positioned over those tabs. So I'm just going to put glue on those tabs. Making sure we're getting a good coverage there. And attach the square to it and it fits perfectly. Let's get it into position. Turn the piece over and press down from the underside. giving it a burnish as well to make sure we get good stick. And then we bring in this other square with the tabs which is a little bit smaller and fold along the score lines. And I'm going to bring in the lantern, turn it over to the bottom and you'll see that that piece fits in there in the same way that the window piece is fitted into the frame. And I'm going to use 1 8 of an inch double sided tape to stick that into place because as you could see glue would get extremely messy. So I've just got glue on, oh sorry, double sided tape on one of those ends and I'm just lining it up against that edge of the frame of the bottom of the lantern side there. You can see I'm lining up exactly against that edge because it fits exactly and just one by one I'm going to remove the release paper from each of the edges and stick them into place. This sort of creates a floating floor in the bottom of the lantern. You can see there I've lined it up exactly against that edge. And again this could be cut from designer series paper. Just getting that last piece stuck down and a double sided tape doesn't want to come away. There we go. Get it positioned and that's that piece in place. And that's looking down from the top. And now it's time to stick the actual base onto the bottom of the lantern. So we're going to take some glue and run it along that bottom edge of the lantern. Quite a bit of glue actually. And then I'm going to flip the base over and put it onto the base of the lantern. Flip the lantern around very quickly so that I can then make sure that this is centrally positioned. It is difficult to show you on the camera with the camera looking down, but take the time to make sure this is all central. And you will find that some glue will seep out but that's okay, you can wipe it away, especially if you've used a glue that dries clear. Or you could use double-sided tape. Just fine with glue, you've got that wriggle room to be able to manoeuvre in case it's not straight. So I'm just reaching in there from the inside of the lantern to rub along that edge where the glue is so we've got some good contact. I'm just wiping away the glue there and I'm happy with how this is looking. It's time to get the lid and get it into position into that recessed edge that we made. Once you get it in there the first time it will always fit in there. And then the last thing that we have to do with this lantern is stick these decorator panels on the sides where the windows are. I've gone ahead and done that and this lantern is now finished except for decorating. But with my assembly tutorials you know that I've just got this plain looking one to show you at the end. And the lid does come off for you to put an electronic tea light inside the lantern. 
which looks lovely when it's lit up. And I'll show you a photo of one that I did that's lit up. The lid comes off and you can put one or two or three even, depends how bright you want your light. And the top just fits back on nicely. It is really a stunning lantern. I do love it. Now, of course, I've gone ahead and made one previously before I did my tutorial. And this one I made a couple of weeks ago when I went onto a craft retreat. So you can see I've decorated mine on the top there with some flowers from Kaiser Craft and some flatback pearls that I've stuck over those joins in the lid, which makes it look very pretty. Lid comes off and you can see that I've got the decorator panel there on the inside. Got flowers on the front in the corner there. And I've gone ahead and put a flower on every side and also a pearl in the middle of the windows just to tie it all in and on the back there I've got three flowers down the bottom. I was very happy with the way that I decorated this lantern. It is a good size this lantern from the bottom to the top of that part where you can hang it. It's about nine and a half inches high. So it's a good height and the width is around about four and three quarters of an inch. So a really really good size. So pretty. And this lantern could be decorated for any time of the year. Christmas, Halloween, birthdays, Mother's Day, whatever you like. So that's my tutorial finished for today. I hope you find this tutorial helpful and that you might like to give this lantern a go. Make sure you set yourself aside enough time to get this made as it is a little bit time consuming. Don't forget to check the description box down below for the links to Andy's store as to where you can buy this die set. And if you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I would really love that too. Thanks very much for watching today. Have a great day and until next time, it's bye for now.